Marlboro cigarettes are the most popular cigarettes by far. The brand is valued at $35.5 billion, over five times larger than its next competitor. But it wasn't always like this. In the 1950s, Marlboro owned less than 1% of the cigarette market. They were often seen as an inferior product to other brands like Camel, and no one dared to smoke them in public for fear of being laughed at. But through one famous marketing campaign, they completely changed the world's perspective and made themselves the most valuable cigarette brand to ever exist exist. So, how did they do it? To understand their strategy, we need to look at the problems Marlboro was facing that were holding them back in the first place. Marlboro cigarettes were introduced in 1924 and were first marketed as America's luxury cigarette. But one major event in American history would change their marketing strategy drastically. In the 1920s, Congress proposed a bill that would ban women from smoking in public. Women were forced to smoke in their homes, and if they were caught smoking in public, they would be arrested and even sentenced to jail time. These legislative changes gave Marlboro the perfect marketing opportunity. Marlboro's new ads would shift that narrative and depict smoking as glamorous rather than unladylike. The ads they would run were primarily based on how ladylike the filter was in Marlboro cigarettes. Back then, most cigarettes had no filter, but Marlboro was one of few brands that had them. The filter had a printed red band around it to hide lipstick stains, and the tobacco formula they used appealed to women as it was far less harsh on the throat than other brands. As brilliant as the idea was to market to women, Marlboro still failed to grow its brand for one primary reason. At the time, there was an attitude that the only people who smoked filtered cigarettes were were women, so no man dared to touch Marlboros. However, a substantial cultural shift was about to occur, because in the 1950s, studies started to arise concerning the health risks of cigarettes. Smoking was still at an all-time high, even after this news broke but men became more concerned about their health. They were now considering smoking cigarettes with filters because now they were considered safer than those without. Men at the time said that while they would consider switching to a filtered cigarette, they were concerned about being seen smoking a cigarette marketed to women. That was Marlboro's next problem. They had the filtered cigarettes that were considered safer, but now they needed a way to convince men to use them. This problem led to Marlboro creating one of the most famous marketing campaigns of all time. In 1955, Marlboro created the Marlboro Man. He was essentially a mascot for Marlboro cigarettes that was played by many different men in the 50s and 60s. The Marlboro Man was one of the most unique campaigns of all time for one specific reason. It conveyed a lifestyle, not a product. Most filtered cigarette advertising sought to make claims about the technology behind the filter. Through the use of complex terminology and scientific claims about the filter, the cigarette industry wanted to ease fears about the harmful effects of cigarettes. However, Marlboro decided to address these fears through an entirely different approach. Instead of creating ads with all of these health claims about the filter and the cigarettes, they started experimenting with lifestyle advertising. Lifestyle advertising tries to connect emotionally with the viewer and is focused on feelings, values, or status symbols. It doesn't sell the product, but rather pushes to awaken emotions and create connections with the product being sold. So how do they go about advertising the lifestyle of using Marlboros? This is where the Marlboro Man comes into our story. The goal of the Marlboro Man was to show that even the most rugged, macho men could smoke filtered cigarettes. The ads would feature manly cowboys smoking Marlboros and wild terrain. These ads mainly ran as print ads, but would later be televised with a similar vibe to them. But the genius of the Marlboro Man goes farther than the lifestyle. He represented something much more that stuck with consumers forever. He was more than a mascot. He was an idol. The Marlboro Man was the portrait of physical health and strength, despite what research suggested about smoking and lung cancer. He showed that not only were Marlboro smokers rugged and masculine, but they were in control of their bodies. He gave off the vibe that nobody could tell a Marlboro smoker what to do and that they didn't have to listen to doctors or public health people. The cowboy image was also genius for another huge reason. Cowboys were huge in pop culture at the time. Western TV shows like Gunsmoke and Maverick were all the rage in the 50s and 60s, and Americans saw the cowboys in these shows as heroes. The Marlboro Man fit that role perfectly. He wasn't just a product mascot, he became an American hero. And the results show how well the Marlboro Man resonated with Americans. Within a year, Marlboro's market share rose from less than 1% to the fourth best-selling cigarette brand. And within four years after the campaign, it became the number one best-selling cigarette in the world. Marlboro was an unstoppable force after the Marlboro Man. But that force would come to an abrupt end with one significant change in United States law.
More and more studies started to surface in the 60s regarding the hazardous effects cigarettes had on people's health. This led to the FTC to punish advertisers that didn't warn the public of the health hazards of cigarette smoking. New legislation was signed in 1969 that required cigarette companies to put warning labels on cigarette boxes. But that wasn't the worst of it for Marlboro. On April 1st, 1970, President Richard Nixon would sign legislation officially banning cigarette ads on television and radio. The ban took effect at midnight on January 2nd, 1971. Therefore, banning televised and print ads of the Marlboro Man from that day on. Because of these events, Marlboro cigarette sales started to plummet, along with every other cigarette brand sales as well. However, it's hard to not recognize the beauty in Marlboro's ads. The marketing strategies Marlboro applied undoubtedly remain relevant today. People still don't want to be sold a product. They crave feelings and connections, just like how Marlboro did with the Marlboro Man. With their insane growth in sales and their revolutionary marketing strategy, Marlboro and the Marlboro Man will forever ever be known as one of the first and best success stories in the history of marketing.